Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. We're here today with Jeremy from Airlift Performance. Jeremy, thanks for coming. Thanks, Bill. I'm going to admit it wasn't long ago when I thought of airbags. I thought of slam trucks, stuff like that. As soon as you put an air suspension on 5030, though, it changed my opinion of it. Obviously, I know it's all about performance. Tell us about the kit you brought with us. We're going to be installing on this GT500. Well, this is our performance uh, airlift kit, uh, part number 95723. Uh, comes with our digital V2 system. Um, it's really set up to be the best all-around suspension you can have. Uh, you can have a lowered stance, good ride quality, you can still take it to the track and beat on it once in a and while. And these are good for drag racing, autocross, road racing, the suspension will do all that stuff on top of giving you that slam look that everybody loves these Whatever days. you want to do. Okay, what does this kit include? What comes with it? Um, everything you see here comes with the kit. Uh, we've got our, our front struts, our rear airbags which take place of the recoil springs, uh, shocks, our manifold and valve unit along with the controller. Uh, air compressor and then your storage tank. Okay, and tell us about that V2 controller. What options come with that versus other other ones you've had before? The V2 is a great unit. Um, it's very compact. It's got eight different presets. So okay. you can put in, if you've got a, a steep driveway, if you just want the front end to come up, you can push a button, just that happens. Uh, it's got a ride height. You can go all the way down. You can really set up however you want to. So what kind of ride height are we talking here versus all the way down to maxed out height wise? Um, normal ride height is inch and a half to two inches below stock. Okay. Um, this kit will go all the way down four inches below stock and about a half inch to an inch above. So you have a ton of play then as far as you know laying it out if you need to, but then driveways you can put it up in the air without a problem at yep, all. Yep, exactly. Okay, what kind of adjustability do you have in your shocks and struts? Um, with the shocks and struts, they are 30 way damping adjustable, so you can really fine tune it if you want a good stiff ride or if you're going to the track, want it stiff. If okay. you're going drag racing, you can stiffen up the rear, lighten up the front to get good weight transfer on it. Okay. Um, we've also got uh, adjustable camber plates. These will go to about negative three degrees. And this is a bolt-in assembly, you don't need any pieces off the factory one. It's a complete bolt-in strut Everything is bolt-in, yep. Okay, and with this kit, on say like our GT500 here, what kind of time frame is it going to take? I mean, obviously we're going to do the install here and show people how to do sure. it. But what kind of time frame would an average mechanic, or someone with average mechanical abilities, take to put this system in their car? With everything taking your time, about eight to ten hours. Okay. Uh, no special tools. Everything bolts in. You got to drill a couple holes, and then really that's it. Great. Well, let's get started. Awesome. Sounds good. All right, so what's the best way to get started? Obviously, the suspension is direct replacement for the factory pieces, yep. but beyond that, where do we start? Uh, normally, I like to start with the tanking and the compressor. Uh, you can put everything in the trunk. Uh, we're going to show you a way we're going to do it, kind of hang it from the package tray. Okay. Um, kind of hide the compressor down the spare tire well. It doesn't take up much room at all, and everybody thinks with the air suspension you're going to gain 60, 70 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, with this, you know, the suspension components are lighter. We have an aluminum tank, we have a small compressor. So that'll balance out any weight added by the e compressor exactly. and you're not making the car any heavier. I know yep. that's important to a lot of our, a lot of people watching probably. Yeah, and as you see, it's not going to take up much room in the trunk. You'll still have plenty of room to take the groceries, kids' stroller, whatever you need. Okay, let's grab the components and we'll start fitting everything. Sounds good. All right, you were saying we're going to mount the tank up under this, keep it out of the way? Yeah, we're going to put it right up here on the package tray. Let's call it, fix it. To mark some holes, we're actually going to have to drill into the bracket a little bit to move it in. We're right on the edge of the curve out okay. here. Okay, yeah, we'll never get a nut on it, we'll no. put it that way. No, so if we move that in, we'll mount it up here, keep it right out of the way for Okay, everybody. we'll drill the holes and we'll put it back in and mark everything in. All right. Now we're going to mark the holes. Okay, so we did mount this, or modify this tank a little bit to mount it the way we wanted to. If you don't want to hang it from here, we do have different tank options if you want to put it down in the spare tire well or somewhere else in your trunk. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now we're getting to the point where we're going to mount the compressor and you have a lot of different options of where you want to put it. Uh, the customer of this Shelby kind of want to keep the compressor hidden, so we've gone down into the spare tire well. Uh, we've already had the vehicle up in the air to make sure that we're not going to drill through into any lines or fittings, hoses, or anything like that uh, that could be in the way. So we're going to go ahead and mount this here, and then we're going to run the lines up to the tank. We'll show you that in a second. All right, so we've got the holes drilled for the tank. Now we're going to mount the compressor first before the tank goes into place? Yes. Okay, how do we mount the compressor? Uh, well, the compressor's got little feet on it. This actually comes with our compressor mounting kit. Um, a little bit of a noise suppression to it. The compressor can be a little bit loud, but this really quiets it down okay. quite a bit. So we're just going to mark our holes and drill through the spare tire well and get it mounted up. Okay. So 
think it's going to fit right there. Okay. While Bill's drilling the holes for the compressor, I'm going to go ahead and put the tank together. Now with the tank, you have five different ports on here and you can really configure it however you want to. You can run your compressor in on this side, you put the appropriate fittings over here. Uh, we've got some plugs, they're a nice push to connect fitting, uh, really leak proof. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get this put together and uh, get it in the car. Okay, now while we're putting the tank together, you want to be really careful when wrapping these with Teflon tape. You don't want to put the tape where it's over the orifice of the fitting because that's going to go through your air system and cause a lot of problems. So you just go back on the threads, leave about a thread or two showing. You just kind of put that on nice and tight. I like to wrap it around two or three times. You don't want to put too much on because then it will be really hard to get into the tank. You want to keep all the frays and everything from getting in the fitting at all. Now once you've got it wrapped, you can go ahead and start putting your tank together. Now we've got the fitting installed for the compressor line that's going to be coming into it. With all the ports, you're not going to use them all. They're not going to have a dedicated fitting, such as this one. This is just going to be kind of a dummy port. We've got a plug that's going to go in it. It's just going to seal it from any uh, air leaking out of the tank. Okay, so the pump's mounted, do we do the tank next, or where do we go from here? Well, right now we're gonna put in the airlift control manifold. Uh, this is your air distribution block, has all the electronics and everything built into it. Okay. So this is really the brain and the heart of the system. Uh, we're gonna mount this right above the tank. It's a little bit easier right now to mount it without the tank in the way. Okay, sounds good. It should be right there. Good to go. Okay, so now we're going to mount the tank here with hardware. Get the bolts. There. All right, so the tank's mounted, the pump's mounted. Manifold's mounted. I guess it's time for the lines. Yep, we got to connect everything together. Okay. We've already installed uh, a line going from the compressor to the tank that uh, we've got to hook up yet. Okay. Um, this is a line that's going to go to the tank itself. It's just a regular tire valve on this end. And what's that uh, for? This is going to be for if for some reason the compressor ever goes out, you don't have air, you can hook this up to a regular shop air compressor. Okay. This will also drain the tank as well. Okay, so it's a drain and fill for the tank, almost yep. like an emergency backup. Right, exactly. Okay. You, know, you got the compressor on and you're compressing air, it's going to make moisture. You're going to get a little bit of moisture in the tank. Okay. So periodically, every other month, depending on where Just you Just like live. the air compressor in your house. Same exactly. Idea. Okay, yep. easy enough. And these lines, where do they have to be run on the cars? There's a specific place. I'm assuming it's plastic. You don't want it near heat. Right, exactly. Plastic, it's, it's going to melt when it hits heat. Um, with this car, we're going to run it inside the vehicle, okay. um, just along the door sills, underneath the carpet. You can run it underneath as well, as long okay. as you keep it away from heat, you know, anything rotating, drive shaft, anything like that at all. Okay, and you said the lines are very particular as far as how they're cut. You want to tell us a little more about that and show the people here so they know what exactly. they're doing at home? Exactly. Uh, the lines, or the whole kit will come with a line cutter. You want to use this rather than just a regular straight razor blade. Okay. Um, when you do that, there's a chance that you're going to go down and actually cut it on an angle. If you got an angle, it's going to leak. Okay. So it's as simple as this. You put the line in here, press down on it. You got to straight. And just cut. make sure it's straight. Yep, very, exactly. very important. Okay. Yep. Seems easy enough. Let's. We're going to start with the drain line. You said. Yep. We'll run the drain line. And get that in place. Okay. And you're putting that through, a, that's a factory grommet on yeah, the floor of these cars. Factory grommet, I just put a little hole in. You know, whenever possible, use factory holes, factory grommets. You know, at least holes we got to drill in the GT500, the happier we're going to be. 
it. So I found this little channel that we can route the line right up through here. Just kind of keep it out of the way. And if you do have the Shaker 1000 or Shaker Pro, you will have to remove the subwoofer for this part of the installation. Cutter here. And we'll just cut off our excess. Always good to leave a little bit more than you need. Okay, push that in and we've got a drain. Jeremy, since it was tough to see on the side of the tank, can you show everybody how the fittings actually work with your airline? Yeah, this is a simple push to connect fitting. So what that means is you can just push the line in here and it's automatically going to lock. So no tools, nothing to twist? Nope, not, not at all. This is a pipe thread and you can thread this into your, your tank, your airbag, or whatever you're going okay. into. So when you got the line, you can simply just push it in and it stays locked. If you want it to come out, everybody thinks you have to cut it. All you have to do is pull this collar, push it in, pulls right out. Okay, so just simply push in, press and lock. Yep, you can reuse it, it's not a problem at all. Excellent. We tie the end of the factory harness here to run up to our tank. I'm gonna connect it to the compressor pump, and Jeremy will connect it to the tank itself. Okay, I've got the opposite end of the line that Bill just put into the compressor. I'll hook it right in here to our tank. That way, the, when the compressor's running, the air's coming right into the tank, and that's gonna give you your reserves so you got air on demand whenever you need it. Okay, now we're gonna connect the manifold to the tank supply line. Plug it in there, plug it into our pressure connect fitting on top, and we now have air pressure to the whole system. Okay, now we're starting to run the air lines from the individual airbags up to the manifold. Uh, we've got a line right here. This is going to the left front airbag. We're just gonna simply pull in here, plug it in, pull it back out, make sure it's nice and tight, and now we're gonna run the rest of the line. Okay, on this particular car, we're gonna run the lines underneath the rear seat and then down the door sill panels on each side, just to keep it inside a little bit more protected than being outside all the time. Here we get the line up under the dash by taking the door sill plate off. We found on this model here, there's a nice electrical plug harness located right on the firewall. There's a little nub that sticks off the side closer to the inside of the fender. You cut that off, it's the perfect size to run the hose through. So on this side, on the passenger side, it's the same style of grommet that Bill was talking about on the driver's side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clip this little nub right here. We've already checked, there's nothing running through it at all. And that'll make a perfect spot for our airline and our wires to come through. Airline will come through, go here, the wires will slip through behind the uh, inner fender well here and go right up to the battery. All right, now the hoses are run, let's move on to the wiring. You said it's a three wire hookup. Where does all this go? It's got a lot of wires there. Well, it, it looks like a big bundle, but it's really not. I mean, we're gonna run three wires up through the actual car itself. Okay. Right along where we ran the uh, airline so yesterday. So power ground, then a turn on them. Power so. ground, ignition, that's it. Okay. Um, and then we've got, back here, we've got your power and ground for the compressor. Okay. So we'll run this back here. Uh, this will be the plug going into the manifold itself. Okay. That's where all the power is gonna come through. We've got a sealed relay, and then we've got the cable we're gonna run underneath the carpet up into Okay, so no carpet. separate harness for the pump. No. Nope. It's all one harness everything for everything. is all together. Okay. Start fishing that through. All right. Okay, we're getting ready to run our wires to the car. Uh, we've got our three electrical hookups here. We've got your battery ground, your battery power, and then our ignition source, which we're gonna take right into this fuse box. Okay, so now we've got the wires fished through the car. Um, we've got the battery, the battery, the power, the ground, and the uh, ignition circuit. Um, we're gonna go ahead and leave these here. We're gonna cut off the excess, hook it up once we've got all the suspension parts in place. While Jeremy's making connections up front, I extended the wiring harness to the compressor, wrapped around the trunk through the factory harnesses, and then up to the main power harness, which is connecting to the manifold up above the air tank. I also plugged in all the wiring for the manifold, and have the airlines back here as well. All right, so the wires and hoses are done. I guess it's time for the actual suspension. We'll leave one 
one just still attached so the strut doesn't fall out on us when we take it out down here. Right now I'm removing the uh, ABS wires. That way we can go ahead and install them once we get our new strut in. Jeremy, you said before the front strut installation is just like installing a standard strut. There's nothing special, no extra holes, brackets, direct, nothing. Nope, it's just direct a molding. direct replacement. Jeremy's going to pop off the strut. Now, we've showed you this a bunch of times. Basically, you remove the sway bar end links, remove the two bolts to hold the strut to the spindle, then remove the top bolt and the strut's going to come right out. Okay, so here we have a comparison of the factory GT500 Shelby strut and the airlift performance strut. Now, Bill and I weighed these yesterday. The Shelby strut weighs eight pounds more than what our strut does. So if you're worried about weight gain or anything like that with an air suspension system, don't worry about it. Not gonna be an issue. Okay, now we've got our braid line threaded into our airbag. We're gonna go ahead and mount the strut in. This line is gonna meet up with the plastic line we ran earlier from the trunk. Okay, now we're going to replace the factory Ford sway bar link with the airlift performance link. Right now I'm reattaching the brake line to the brake line tab that's already on our strut. Okay, now we're just going to plug the braided hose into our plastic line we ran earlier. We'll zip tie that out of the way and we are all set with the front. Now that the front suspension is finished, we're moving on to the back. We're going to remove the shocks, drop the sway bar for clearance, and install the new rear bags and new rear shocks. I'll save this nut because it is going to be used on the uh, new strut we're putting back here. Now we're going to drill some holes in the upper coil spring pocket. First hole, you're just going to enlarge the factory hole that's already there. The stud is going to slide up through here. We're going to take this nut off. When it goes up through the trunk, we're going to put the nut back on and holds it in place. We're also going to drill another hole for the air line to come in down from the trunk into the airbag. Okay, here we are in the rear of the car. We're going to take the bump stop. You're going to take these top two ribs you can cut them right off. You can cut them with a hacksaw or a sharp knife. Goes through fairly easy. Okay, here we're going to put the nut into the bottom of the coil spring perch. You'll put the nut facing down. That slides right in there. Okay, then you install the lower bag spacer. And what you'll do is you'll put the bag up into the coil spring pocket. This lower stud will go into the nut we dropped into the perch. You want to spin it down until it starts getting tight, and then you'll give it a good round, make sure it's nice and tight in there. 
Now here's where it's important. You want to line up that hole that you drilled, the second hole, with the airport on the airbag. That way the line can come down through the uh, car and go right into the fitting. Yeah, well, Bill's jacking up the rear of the car. I'm guiding the airbag in to make sure the stud fits into that factory hole we drilled earlier. Okay, here we're gonna get ready to install the rear shock. Uh, we transferred the OEM bushing and the metal plate um, from our original shocks onto ours. Now what we found with the 2013 GT500 we have now, they have the electronic suspension on it. That will not work. You'll have to get a stock 11 through 14 GT bushings to put it into place. We've got the shock through here. We've got our upper nut reattached to it. We're going to go ahead and tighten this down. Now the stud that came up through the, uh, the trunk here, we've got our nut and a washer on there. We're also going to put a grommet around the airline so this sharp metal doesn't cut in the line and cause an issue. Okay, now we're button buttoning things up in the back here. We've got all of our airlines ran. Um, on the manifold itself, it will say, uh, FL, left front. That's all marked here so you know where to run your airlines. Now with these lines we're going to leave them a little bit long just in case the owner of the car wants to hide things a little bit more, we'll kind of leave it up to him. Okay, we just finished wiring up the controller. We ran the wire underneath the carpet up into the center console just to give the owner some options of what he wants to do with the controller. Right now it's just going to set basically in the cup holder. You can mount it but a lot of people like to be able to put it away too. Right now we're getting the electronics hooked up. We're running the battery ground. We're going to be hooking up the power wire for the compressor directly to the battery positive. We've got a small pink wire here. This is going to be your ignition uh, source wire. Uh, we're in the fuse box underneath the hood. We're looking for a circuit that's going to be hot during key on, uh, engine start, and then back to on. We found in the Shelby here, there's an engine two port that we're going to go into. There's just a nice little add a fuse circuit that goes right in here. All right, so everything's installed, everything's hooked up. What's next? We're ready to go. We're going to actually use the emergency fill that okay. we put in just because there's no pressure in the tank right now. And Instead of running the compressor to death to fill right, it the first time. Right, exactly. It, it just kind of gives the compressor a break a little bit. So we're okay. going to fill it with this to probably about 80, 90 PSI. And what kind of pressure does the tank hold? What's it going to, is there a start, stop? How often does it run? It's going to go to 150 PSI. Okay. And then anytime it below, dips below 135, the compressor is going to come back on automatically. Okay, okay. Assuming the car's on. Well, yeah. exactly. Okay, so we've got the whole system installed. Now what we need to do is go through what we call a calibration process. Basically what's going to happen is it's going to run the vehicle through a series of air bursts to each individual airbag, basically testing out how much volume it takes to inflate a bag and how long it's going to take to inflate one. So we go into the calibration uh, menu here. And then we'll just hit system cal. Uh, it's gonna tell you it can last about 10 minutes. We wanna say yes to that. Uh, vehicle is on level ground, parking brake is off, proceed. And it'll go ahead and put it into its calibration sequence. Okay, so now we've got everything installed. We've been through the calibration process. Now is the time to determine at what height you want the vehicle. Once you determine that height, it's going to be your preset one option. And that way, when you start the vehicle, if you're from all the way down in a show stance, as soon as you start it, it'll automatically come up to your ride height, no need to press a button or anything else. And then you can set your other eight presets. Uh, we've got an all up button, so speed bumps, steep driveways, things like that. And also an all down button. You can really customize this however you want to for how many different heights you want to have and it's all instant. It's kind of like a smartphone where you've got to wake it up, 
you press the button once and then you press it again, they actually get it to function. So if you bump it going down the road with your elbow, it's not gonna make a difference at all. Okay, and with the system, we don't have time to go through all the functions and everything that it will do. It comes with our very detailed instruction manual, helps you run through everything to really set it up to fit your needs with the vehicle. Okay, another great feature of our shocks and struts is the ability to adjust the damping. They're 30 way damping adjustable, so you can set it up as stiff or as soft as you want, depending if you're going to the racetrack or just driving around town. All right, Jeremy, we obviously talked about the huge benefit of ride height adjustment and the fact that it's also a performance suspension. You're getting quality mm -hmm. shocks, quality struts, everything's adjustable. What else should someone who's interested in airlift performance be prepared for? What else do they need to know about these systems? Well, they're extremely reliable. You can hit the track, you can drive it to a show, you can drive it every day. It's, it's really great as an all-around everyday suspension. Okay. Uh, now, with that, it is so different when you pull into a car show and you lay it out. People are going to look at you. You're going to get questions like, can you drive it this slow? It, it's obviously not going to drive it This is a big no on that right, one. Yes, exactly. Don't even try it. You're not going to make yeah, it very yeah, far. Well, wheels are not going to turn. It's, it's not going to do that. Um, you also get the question, you know, can you make it hop? That's not what this is designed to do. It's, it's not hydraulics. It's, it's not air, hydraulics. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it came a long ways from those days. You know, this is a great all-around performance package. Okay. A system like this, as we showed you, the installation is not too bad. I'd say probably give yourself a weekend. You can do it with basic hand tools in your garage. You'll be back on the road in no time.